fluffy, dry aged, and walkingly fried to perfection. Scrambled eggs aren't the only foods restaurants work their five-star magic on. You've probably wondered why scrambled eggs taste better from a restaurant than at home. It's only a few simple ingredients, after all. Maybe you've heard that adding milk is an incredible hack, but it actually makes the eggs rubbery and bland. Instead, add half a teaspoon of water per egg, which helps create steam while the eggs cook. That way, the proteins don't bind too quickly and are actually fluffier rather than tough and dense. Also, don't be tempted to crank up the heat so that your eggs cook quickly. That'll just lead to dry, rubbery eggs. Most chefs recommend cooking scrambled eggs between low and medium heat. According to NYT Cooking, some chefs cook scrambled eggs for as long as 30 minutes. Restaurants may be a pro at scrambling eggs, but they're also five-star at these other foods, too. When it comes to burgers, the first thing is that restaurants probably use different beef than you, especially if you buy pre-made patties at the supermarket. Chefs pay attention to what a cow ate during its life. For example, meat from cows that ate soy, corn, and other sugary foods is sweeter. So many restaurants source grass-fed or grass-finished beef. Next, chefs think about the amount of fat in their burger mixes. Restaurants with great burgers often use meat that is between 20 and 25% fat, leading to a juicier burger. Another critical element of moisture retention is how they cook their burgers. They use meat thermometers to verify they don't serve undercooked meat. Also, by not pressing down on their burgers while they cook on a flat top, chefs can be sure they come out great every time. Seasoning the outside of the patty just before cooking maintains the ideal burger texture without sacrificing flavor. Finally, chefs carefully select toppings like cheeses and buns in different combinations to create unique and delicious burgers. The most obvious reason vegetables taste better at restaurants is that they use more butter and salt than home cooks do. But there's more you can try. Add fresh herbs and cheese, or use different kinds of fats and types of vinegar. When you add your salt also matters. If you add salt a couple of hours before you cook your veggies, they'll soak it up and be nicely seasoned. You can also do so much more than just boil or saute your veggies. Try roasting and grilling them. Most importantly, if you blanch your vegetables in salt water before using another cooking method, they'll turn out crispier and better cooked. Who knows? Maybe this could finally convince your kids to eat their vegetables. Uh, Mom, is this dinner? It's like all vegetables, and I don't have enough places to hide them. Most restaurants use russet potatoes for their french fries because of their high starch content, which allows them to get fluffy on the inside and crispy on the outside. Restaurants use commercial fryers to get their fries crispy, which means it is difficult to repeat this process at home. Restaurants also reuse their oil, which, surprisingly, helps fries get crispier. As oil heats, its fats break down and attach to food better. It's a balancing act, though, because oil that's too old can burn and is decidedly not tasty. Speaking of burning, the temperature at which you cook your fries is super important. Most restaurants do a double fry at a range of 325 and 400 degrees, and they usually choose oils with high smoke points like peanut, corn, or canola oil. Restaurants often dehydrate or freeze their potatoes before frying them to ensure they're crispy. Also, sometimes they batter them or add other ingredients such as dextrose and food starch. Well, there is undoubtedly much more to Thai cuisine than Pad Thai, this stir-fry is probably the Thai dish most people have tried making at home. Chef Ora Chun Yodka Amlu told Vice that it's crucial to use high heat when making Pad Thai to keep the noodles from sticking. Yodka Amlu first cooks his protein, then adds a homemade sauce which includes sriracha, fish sauce, tamarind sauce, and sugar. Then he cooks his shallots and dried shrimp. And finally, he adds noodles, more sauce, and stock. Before serving, he adds egg and garnishes. So, if you want to make restaurant-quality pad thai at home, consider making your own sauce and follow the correct order when adding your ingredients. The reason fried rice tastes better at a restaurant than at home is simple, wok hay. Simply put, wok hay is the unique flavor and aroma that high heat and a wok impart to a dish. This phenomenon means that you need to use a wok to make fried rice at home taste as good as at a restaurant. According to Chef Andrew Zimmern, you must heat your wok before adding oil, 
letting the dry wok smoke before adding cold fat to keep everything inside your wok as hot as possible. Don't overcrowd your pan and always keep everything moving. In restaurants, the direct heat causes a Maillard reaction when heat, tossing, and vaporization meet. Sushi, with its deceptively simple ingredients, seems like it should be easy to make at home. But when your ingredients are simple, they have to be of the utmost quality. If your fish isn't perfect, your sushi isn't going to taste good. Also, sushi chefs are very well trained. Some practice for more than a decade before earning their titles. What do we have here? The building blocks of sushi. Sushi meat, peaches, and guacamole. That said, if you do want to try making sushi at home, there are some key things to keep in mind. Firstly, you shouldn't make homemade sushi too far in advance. That's because refrigerating sushi can affect its taste and quality for the worse. Even leaving sushi at room temperature for more than two hours is a health hazard. If you're pressed for time, make your sushi rice ahead of time. It can be placed in the fridge for up to three days. Handmade tortillas are the secret to delicious homemade tacos. Luckily, whether you are in the mood for corn or flour tortillas, they're incredibly straightforward to make. For corn tortillas, you only need masa harina, aka corn flour, water, and salt. And while tortilla presses are great, they're not absolutely necessary when making fantastic corn tortillas. You can place a ball of prepared masa between two pieces of parchment paper and roll it with a rolling pin. Flour tortillas require a bit more finesse. The best way to ensure fluffy homemade tortillas is to use high-protein flour, a solid fat, and cook them at a high enough temperature. Pizza ovens are the number one reason why restaurant pizza is better than what you make at home. They resemble enclosed fireplaces and cook the pizza by heat radiating off the walls. These ovens can also get twice as hot as a home oven, with some reaching 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's also important to know that there's a big difference between pasta and pizza sauce, and you shouldn't use them interchangeably. Because pizza ovens are so hot, using a pre-cooked sauce could lead to an overcooked sauce in the final product. Pizza sauce can be as simple as you like, you can simply crush tomatoes or add some tomato paste and seasonings. To get your pancakes tasting as good as they do at your favorite diner, make sure that your ingredients are cold. This keeps the chemical leavening reactions from occurring before you cook them. Remember, lumps in your batter are a good thing. They mean you haven't overmixed it. It's also best not to play with your recipe. If you want buckwheat pancakes, find a recipe for buckwheat pancakes rather than swapping out flour in any old recipe. Don't add blueberries or bananas to a recipe that doesn't call for them. Baking is more of a science than an art, and pancakes are a particularly tricky experiment. Most diners and restaurants cook pancakes on griddles rather than in pans, which allows them to cook up several at once, all on an even heat. This certainly is an upsetting number of pancakes. Here we go. NYT cooking writer Jarell Guy has a neat hack for home cooks baking your pancakes in a sheet pan to ensure a large batch of fluffy pancakes is ready simultaneously. Of course, be prepared to forego the round shape. Your local restaurant probably uses a lot more dressing in their salads than you do, and they might make their own, which makes a massive difference. Many chefs also season the salad itself, adding salt and pepper to the leafy greens even before adding the dressing. They're also more likely to use a mix of different greens and other ingredients. This combination creates a more exciting dish due to the variety of textures and flavors. Restaurant salads also have a lot more of another thing many homemade salads are missing, fat. If you're eating salad for its nutritional benefit, consider adding whole fats such as avocado, salmon, or nuts. High quality ingredients, seasoning, and expert construction methods mean that restaurant and deli sandwiches come out better than ones in your own kitchen. Science Focus suggests creating a hydrophobic barrier by spreading butter or mayonnaise on your bread before adding other ingredients. Doing so keeps your bread from getting soggy. Next, everything must be symmetrical on both sides so your sandwich won't fall apart when you put it together. But that's just the construction. Good delis and restaurants ensure they use well-seasoned ingredients before adding them to the sandwich. Interesting flavor combinations are essential too. Fat and acid go well together, so delis often pair vinegar and mayonnaise, for example. Rather than sliced sandwich bread from the grocery aisle, freshly baked bread can also go a long way. 
the reason why steak usually tastes better at a steakhouse than at home isn't actually about the cooking method. Most grocery store meat is wet-aged, meaning it's vacuum-sealed and refrigerated for 10 days. Most steakhouse beef, on the other hand, is dry-aged. That's where the meat is hung in a temperature-controlled room and allowed to grow mold that removes moisture. It's kind of a controlled deterioration of the muscle to get something that's much more tender and that actually goes through a flavor transformation, which we think is really important. You can actually dry-age beef in your own refrigerator. Make sure you have a fridge thermometer and verify your fridge is below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, rinse and dry your cut of beef. Then, wrap it in cheesecloth. Put the meat on a wire rack on top of a sheet pan. Then, leave it in the fridge for a week. Make sure to cut off any pieces of fat that developed on the outside as your meat aged. The University of Missouri says that to ensure your meat doesn't go bad, keep your aging environment clean, and don't age your beef for too long. Obviously, there is more than one type of Indian curry. However, most follow the same pattern, process, and technique. It's the ingredients that change. Following distinct cooking patterns is how restaurants keep their food tasting excellent, dish after dish. First, chefs and cooks temper whole spices, meaning they heat spices in oil so that their flavor becomes infused into the fat. Next, aromatics such as onions and even tomatoes are added and sautéed. These are followed by powdered spices as well as vegetables or proteins central to the dish. The next step is adding the liquid that will provide the base of the curry gravy. Finally, before serving, Chefs add garnishes, such as cilantro or roasted garam masala powder. When attempting to replicate restaurant-style flavor, it's essential to use the ingredients listed in the recipe and in the form called for. If the recipe says a cinnamon stick, don't substitute it with powdered cinnamon. Further, don't be intimidated by the amount of oil in the recipe. A lot of it will be drained off or reused elsewhere. A good stock is the secret to restaurant quality pho. There isn't just one way to make this traditional breakfast dish. However, making bone stock from scratch is a time-intensive process that sets restaurant dishes apart from home ones that use pre-made broths. Take Charles Fan's pho bo recipe. For example, while the individual steps aren't particularly complicated, they are abundant and take plenty of time. One of the great things about this noodle soup is it uses up animal parts that might otherwise go to waste. These parts are often more affordable than other cuts of meat as well.